in honor of DMV FFL Nitro scheduled to take place this weekend, Ross. See what you did there with the Nitro thing. Did you? No, I see what you did there. Took you a bit. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Anyways, anyhow, anywho, Ross, how was your weekend? My weekend was pretty awesome. Pretty awesome? Did a couple things here and there. Had a birthday, you know, got a little bit older. Yeah. I mean, other than the getting older part, it was pretty good, man. It was pretty good. Had a good time. Happy birthday, man. How old is it? What, 32 now? Yeah. 40 more years so you hit yeah, 72. Like, like we said before we went live, the cicadas are coming back. I remember because I was 16 when they came out. So it was every like 16 years too. How will cicadas factor into the 2021 flag football season is the question. We shall see. We shall see. But first this weekend, we got a great tournament ahead for you. It's going to be a good one. Um, DMV FFL, uh, Nitro, it'll be live. Beginning at 8 a.m., we'll have coverage uh, scheduled to be determined on our end. We will have it for you as soon as we get it figured out. We got to still look at some of these games and everything else. Um, I do guarantee we will have coverage of both eight-man and five-man this time around. So you can expect to see us on both fields, whether it be eights for the most part Saturday, because that's what Saturday is going to be. Or once uh, the noon time hits on Sunday, you'll see some five-man action, um, especially these two teams over here. I always get them mixed up. <laughs> Bullets and Misfits, they're going to be in action. Looking forward to seeing both. We saw Bullets at the Breast Cancer Awareness Tournament back in uh, October. I got a chance yeah. to see them at East Coast Nationals last year. And, of course, uh, with the Misfits, we've seen them play some five-man games. In fact, I think we're one to know against the misfits of five man now, but I think about it. Oh boy. Happens. You get lucky sometimes. Bullets fired. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> on the it song. wasn't the bull. Anyway, anyhow, anywho, <laughs> to join us from the DMV FFL is Mr. Mark Williams. Let's get him on right now. He's connected. So we got him. Mark, are you on the show? Yep. What's going on, man? Nothing much, man. How are you tonight? Just got done roughing a JV game. So feel, feeling that a little bit. First time getting back on the field roughing really since uh since Worlds and Worlds. So yeah, I'm running. But yeah that's, good. A long, that's a long time to go without uh being on the field, trust me. I had to get a little workout myself in over the weekend uh before this tournament to make sure that you guys get the best performance out of us here at TBT. Uh, you know, this weekend's going to be crazy with, with some of these matchups. That's, that's are, for sure. There are a lot of good matchups. In fact, let me sit back up real quick. I'm going to pull up the bracket here in a moment over on this end. There we go. We're going to look at the eight-man one first real quick. Let me see how that looks on screen in a second. Um, let's see. Where's that at? Coming up on my end. There we go. I think it's seen. Let me try to zoom in, maybe. Yep. I can't go any further. All right. Um, oh, there it goes. It was slow. So take a look at these teams in the bracket. It, I went too fast, actually. My bad. It wasn't working there for a minute. Now we see it. There we go. One, two, three, four is the magic number, right? No, it's yep, yep. five. There we go. One more for good measure. All right, you got the ATA Warriors. Uh, they were the first team registered on the list. After that, you got Savages. I had a chance to see Savages in action, actually, at East Coast Nationals last year down in Richmond. Uh, they got to the championship game, the B championship. Um, I believe they won. I may be wrong on they, that. They it's beat – they beat Untouchables in overtime for the championship. Yeah, after. I remember it was tied at zero going into overtime. It was a yep. defensive dogfight. Well, you know, you know the Untouchables and Savages, they play each other all the time up in the Baltimore County League. So, hey, they, they see each other entirely too much because actually, you know, Savages beat Untouchables for the East Coast Championship 
And then when they were all went out to the West Coast Championship, um, Savages actually lost to uh, Untouchables, and Untouchables ended up winning West Coast Championship in uh, the in the comp division. So both both of them are are right there at the cusp. I mean, I expect to see both of them in the pro division probably in, within the next year. I think so. I could definitely see that. Um, I mean, for the ATA Warriors as well. I actually, I don't, I've never seen their eight man team, but we've seen their five man team and what they can do. How much is different about their eight man team for what? Uh, they, they, they actually have a hard time with eight men. You know, back in the day, they were, they were probably a top notch, you know, eight man team, especially in the lower divisions. But, you know, over the years, you know, ATA has kind of fallen off with eight men. Um, they still got, they still got some good players over there. It's just that it's harder for the Roger to get the, all those guys out there. So, a man, a man is definitely difficult to uh, manage as a whole. Yes, definitely, especially when you got to travel with the more numbers and everything else. Yeah, you talk, you talking about thirty teams, and actually, just so you know, Savages just went out to Ohio last, not this past weekend, the uh, weekend before, and won out there. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, so I mean, Savages, Savages are on a little win streak. You know, they uh, they're in the Baltimore County uh, playoffs right now, and they actually won yesterday against the disciples which is a rematch coming up for nitro because if you scroll down savages and, and disciples play their first game against each other yep that'll be a 2 p.m kickoff on field one savages and disciples looking forward to that one we'll definitely have coverage of savages for sure be a good yeah. chance to get a look at them for Someone, a team we haven't really covered much outside of me at East Coast Nationals. Um, some other teams on this list as well. Uh, no, the first game of the day is at 8 a.m. Yep. Uh, uh, right and early, 8 a.m. for the first one. Yeah, and that, that, that was kind of crazy because uh, look, uh, Cartel, you know, they're they're the uh, rec champions from uh, the World Championship Tour. Um, for world, so they so they uh they're trying to step up a little bit. You know they'll be in the comp level this year, um, but they kind of got screwed because they had a lower pick and got bumped. And when they got bumped, they ended up in that 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 eight o'clock game, which is crazy because you know they're they're coming all the way up from North Carolina. So thank you for them to uh, travel and support this. I mean, it's huge getting new teams in here because I know a lot of the teams are tired of playing the same teams over and over again. Uh, I, I appreciate them actually coming up here for this tournament. I admire that 100%. You know, traveling is something that a lot of teams struggled with last year with COVID every, and everything else. Uh, while we were able to get some sort of circuit season out there in flag football, it was very, very difficult for a lot of guys to travel because of the risk of illness. And also you had to consider limitations with states and everything else. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of these guys, it's an opportunity to get out of that bubble they've been stuck in all year and finally get back out to the bigger stage. And I mean, I mean like this is a big step, especially as we near East Coast Nationals, which will be May third second. We'll have coverage of that as well when that comes around. Yeah, so it so if you remember last year at East Coast Nationals, um right dead middle of the day in the tournament, you know, the the county came in and they're like, hey, everybody's got to go. So we had to, we had to empty the park last. And, and it, it didn't take us too long. The teams were great about it. You know, all of them, all of them left, got off the turf. And then they, they put stipulations on where, you know, only the team that was playing in the next game could be on the field. But we were able to, you know, get everybody out and get everybody back in fairly quick, which was great. Um, because last year it was the first tournament that after COVID hit, it was the first tournament that, you know, was, was around and everybody came out, their families, everything. They made it, they made it a vacation. And I think we ended up with like 5,000 people at that park last year. That park was loaded. So, but luckily, luckily this year we have a bigger complex. There's going to be 12 turf fields. All of them going to be running at the same time. I mean, it's going to be crazy this year. I can't wait to see it this year. That's going to be a really fun event to be a part of. We are a team blood talk. are honored to be a part of it. Looking forward to that event. Looking forward to this event as well as we've got a team list. Uh, the DMV Jags come after that. Um, I know more about the semi-pro Jags than I do the flag Jags. So do you know DMV much about Jag that? So DMV Jags, you know, that that's Steve-O's team. You know, they, they've kind of been on a – 
on a hot streak and a down spiral at the same time, you know. So they're they're talking a lot of trash. They're having fun with it. Um, other teams are hating on them. I mean, it, it's crazy. I mean, they they played in Little Pete's tournament um, at the beginning of March and didn't have a bad showing. Didn't win it, but you know they they didn't have a bad showing. But um, one of the games to look forward to in the early side of this is DMV Leak and uh, Lights Out. So Lights Out just won Little Pete's tournament um, at the beginning of March. So they're a rec team uh, champion right now. Um, so they're going to go against DMV Elite, and DMV Elite always comes to play, man. So it's, it's, that's going to be a good game to watch. And whoever wins that could see Untouchables next in the second round, which is going to be a hell of a game. That's going to be a really good game. And I got a glimpse of Untouchables. I said that at the East Coast Nationals, that championship game with Savages, one for the ages. If there are two odds on favorites coming into here, you have to say it's Savages and Untouchables. Yeah, I mean, everybody's got to remember Savages are the are the defending champs from last year, and actually, they played Untouchables in the championship to beat them to to win uh, Nature last year. So it's definitely going to be. I, I have to say, Savages are the favorites, um, and Untouchables so they they're also a favorite to win this. So I, I expect to see them both on Sunday at the twelve o'clock game. Um, to see who's going to go down to the loser bracket and who's going to stay in the winner bracket. So it, it's going to be good, though. I, so, but, I do, but I do like some of the new teams on here. So um, Prime Time is Prime Time's a new team that hasn't that we haven't seen play eight man yet. Um, new Era Firehawks, new team. Um, they, from what I understand, is. It's Coach Bob's team that has Coach TBT and some of these other teams. So evidently, this is his new team. So we're going to see see how they do. Maryland Select uh, Patriots is a brand new team. We haven't seen them. Uh, the Goon family, same thing. Haven't seen them. New team. Um, the Horsemen, they're they're an older team. Um, they used to play. Uh, from my understanding, they were the original Smash Mouth five man team. And, you know, Josh and them took – Josh uh, Clark and those guys took over when these guys decided to hang it up. But now they're just trying to uh, get back out there. So I can respect that. You know, some older guys trying to – trying to get back in the – trying to get back in shape and trying to get back in the game. So – and then who else we got new? Um, 717 Elite coming down from York, PA. Appreciate yeah. the hell out of them for coming down. They so, uh, they come from a they come from a different kind of eight man. Yeah, they're um, used to pop flags up there. Yes, they run the pop style up there. In fact, we'll have their tournament next weekend as well. Um, so we're gonna just see the back to back weekends. So yeah. an opportunity to see what seven one seven elite could do on a big stage, starting with this one here at DMV FFL Nitro, and we'll see how can they adjust to playing as. As known, uh, the style of play in DMV FFL and FFWCT is the triple threats. Right. Um, how much difference do you think it really makes for them going from their normal eight-man style to this one? Um, I would honestly, I would say it gives them an advantage. I mean, because as we all know, when it comes to those pop flags, especially the shroom pop flags, you know, you have to actually pull a flag where. Um, the triple threats, unfortunately, you know, the eight-man teams will never go away from triple threat. They love their triple threats. Um, but, you know, some people have problems with triple threats. You know, a center, a lot of times a center, if he's a bigger guy, he has a problem when he snaps, the, the triple threats fall off. Sometimes when you are when you make a juke move, they fall off. Um, and unfortunately, you know, it's up to the refs on how they call it. But it, sometimes the triple threats can give you a disadvantage um, as an offense where – 717 Elite coming in, I mean, they have to be flag pullers. Um, they're used to the eight-man pop flags. Uh, they're used to the non-contact and the five-man contact up there. So we're, we're going to see how they can adjust to the physicality of eight-man down here because I've, I've went up to the York PA. Uh, I've actually refed a York PA tournament, and it, it, it's different. So we're, so we're going to see how they can adjust here. So it's supposed to be, you know – this elite all-star team that they're putting together to travel. So we'll, we'll see how they do, man. I'm interested to see. We will see. There is a lot of talent in that York, Pennsylvania area. 
and those guys, they have a brotherhood going on up there. Sure, they fight on the field, but off the field, when it comes down to taking care of business like this tournament, they're willing to go down there and do it. We saw Gusto Land head down mm-hmm. to East Coast Nationals last year. They stepped up from York 8-man to play the FFWCT style. And we shall see how 717 Elite does along the way. Roy, looking forward to seeing them in action. Mm-hmm. They're getting around a lot because they have a nine-man team as well. I've heard they want to put in a five-man team. Got to love the dedication to play in the game of flag football for them. That's right. Yeah, I was I was going to go back and try to see where uh, Gusser Lamb uh, finished last year because I, I think they I think they had a good showing. I mean they they've uh, got into a few other tournaments, um, even at uh, DMV FFL, and they ha- they haven't done bad, but kind of disappoint, disappointed that I haven't seen those guys uh, sign up. Even they didn't sign up for this, and they didn't even they haven't signed up for East Coast Nationals. I like to get some more of those York PA teams in East Coast Nationals, but it kind of seems like. 717 Elite is the only ones that are like really willing to travel right now. So um, I know they, I'm on their Facebook page and I know they're, they're up there talking a lot of trash and everything else. So the, uh, what's, what's the one team? Uh, killer Bees. Killer Bees. Can't say I mean, killer. He don't like the R D yet. He likes to kill us. He says. All right. But I mean, I'd like to see them travel. I mean, they're, I'm, I'm guessing they're a top team up in York PA, right? Yeah. From what I've been told, they're one of the better teams in York. Gene Sanchez I mean, they, and company up there. I mean, they need to come. They need to come over to East Coast Nationals and and see and see where they really rank. And then, I mean, everybody knows, you know, league play is different than tournament. So, come come out and see where you rank. See how you do. I mean, we right now we're sitting at thirty teams in eight man rec. Thirty teams. We're only taking thirty two. So, those last two spots are up for grab for eight man rec. Um, need to get some more in comp. Right now, we're sitting at uh, I think fifteen or sixteen teams in the comp division and the pro team we're sitting at seven right now um from my understanding there's some other teams that are going to sign up for the pro division i've talked to some teams out of atlanta some more teams out of dc um trying to see if i can get some teams from out the west coast to come over so the it, it's going to be like that man it really is Drew Skins just said in the comments they are entering a rec team and said it is a unified York squad that will be representing 717 Elite come this East Coast Nationals. And with that, we've seen the potential they could bring. There's a lot of talent up in York, PA. We so should see what they could do. So what are they What are they going to call themselves over there? So I can make sure I look out for the registration. I think he's – I think it's a 717 I think it's referring to. I'm not sure if they're a wreck or not. Are you know offhand? Nah, but I'm, I'm about to look to see because I'm not sure if 717 registered already. I thought they did, um, but I'm not 100% sure. Let me jump on here and see real quick. Take a look at that as we take a look at other teams. Lights out. They'll be joining. Uh, what do you he know? Said, no, no, no. Gusto is playing together with 717. Gusto is. Okay, is that what's being said? He's okay. Playing with okay, that's what he's saying. Gotcha. So I think you're referring to this one specifically. Yeah. So you're going to see the Gusto guys there this time around. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to talk to him and see if I can get them in East Coast Nationals too, man. So I, would do, see, I would love to see them there, man. I mean, so there, there's a lot of teams registered for the rec division and it's, I mean, honestly, it, it's going to be a dogfight down in the right division. But I'd like to see more of these teams actually get into the get into the comp divisions and step up and, and see what you're made of. You know, just don't don't hang out down there in the right division because you think it's easier. So that that's my big thing. So, but getting back getting back to this. So I mean, it, it's looking like you know there's going to be some great games early in the morning and and some in the afternoon. Yeah, and as as we weed some of these guys out uh, in the loser bracket, and all I'm sure there's going to be some great games down in the loser bracket too. So it's going to be interesting. For sure, for sure. Uh, you have light. You have as well in this tournament. Lights out. Disciples we mentioned already. Goon family. Any details on Goon family? Goon family, brand new team. So this is the first tournament that they're getting in, and they're actually, if I remember correctly, they're playing eight man and five man. 
Let me see. Nice. Double dipping. I like that. Yeah, so. Make the most of the weekend. We got Maryland Select Patriots. Another brand new team. Don't know anything about them. We're we're gonna see we're gonna see come Saturday and see what they can do. So between Boone family and and Maryland Select Patriots, both brand new teams, first tournament that we're seeing them in. So it, it should be interesting to see who comes out of that. And hate to say this, but in this side of the bracket, I'm looking for Cartel to actually run through some of these teams. But we're we're gonna see who who does what on it. That's that honest. Cartel's going to have to get off to a hot start. They have that first game at 8 a.m. in prime time before going right to the Firehawks before a breather against the winner of Select Patriots and the Goon family. Well, I, Cartel can do it. You know, they they have – I don't know if you remember Matrix. Um, <laughs> Matrix, he's been playing eight-man for a while, Hall of Famer for the USFTL. I mean, he gets those guys ready, and he they're, they're – uh, they're a team that can honestly compete. And right now, they're actually registered for the pro division at East Coast Nationals. So we're, we're going to see if they if they stay up in the pro division. Um, they'll be playing teams like Cheat Code. Um, who else? Uh, we got athletes coming up, coming up from North Carolina. Then another athlete's coming down from Massachusetts. So they're, they're, there's going to be some great competition all around up there. So... I'm just trying to see if uh, Cartel can actually compete in the pro division against some of these teams. Going down the list again, we had the Baltimore Rebels as well as the Spartans. DMV Spart- Elite, yes. Spartans is a new team as well. Um, they're coming from, from my understanding. Uh, they got quite a few of the old Hitman players, um, such as Kevin Brown, Will at quarterback, and a few other ones. So, they, they've pretty much changed their name, um, and they're going to bring some of those guys out, and let's see if they can recreate the magic from when they won the uh, the USFTL uh, Nationals the last year that USFTL was around, you know, so Hitman won that one. Um, so they've been trying to trying to rebuild and recap that. Um, same thing with DMV uh, Elite, you know, they're, they're national champ down in the, uh, in the lower division, so we'll see if they can – put it together and make another run at the another national or world championship. That's your prime time as well. A new team. Where are they from exactly? Do you have a state for them? Uh, let me see. Let me see. So I'm familiar with an eight man team from Virginia called prime time, but I don't know if they might be the same core group of guys or just another team calling themselves that. Yeah. I, honestly, I don't have where they're from, so I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. I'd have to, I'd have to access the server and everything else to see exactly where they're from. Um, but I'm not 100% sure if that's the same eight-man team from Virginia or not. We also have from there Lake Cartel, as mentioned, Smoking Ducks as well. Smoking Ducks just won this past weekend in the Baltimore County playoffs. They played lights out. Um from my understanding, it was a hard fought game, and the duck and the smoking ducks actually ended up coming out on top on that one. So they're they're both looking for a rematch. They they want to play each other again. From my understanding, lights out, so they got something to prove with uh smoking ducks. So they they want another shot at them. So the the only way they'll meet right now is if they're both in the winners bracket for the championship, or if both of them hit the loser bracket early. So we'll we'll see how that works. From there, we move on to the Bangin' Bengals. Yep, Bangin' Bengals. Um, from my understanding, this is going to be their first tournament this year. Um, they have played in some other tournaments last year. Actually, they played at East Coast Nationals last year. Um, they played in the pro division last year at East Coast Nationals, but they, they were a brand new team. That was their first tournament. So <clears throat> I think they got their feet wet. Um, I think they're going to regroup, come out here and see, see if they've got their stuff together so they can make a run at the championship. Horsemen. Yep, Horsemen. We talked about them a little bit. You know, they're they're an older team coming back out and trying to get some exercise, seeing if they can recreate some magic from uh, before. And, of course, we finish with 717 Elite, who we've already spoken of as we take a look real quick at the other uh, the game schedule on here. First games will be at 8 a.m. We'll be live for 8 a.m. games. We want to start your morning right. 
We got yes. Lay Cartel in prime time, as well as Lights Out and DMV Elite. Mm-hmm. I know well, a lot of people want to see that game. Yeah. Which one is in particular? The the Lights Out uh, DMV Elite. We will have it live, bright and early. Moving on to the next game, 9 a.m. slot. You have the New Era Firehawks taking on the winner of Cartel in primetime, um, as well as the Untouchables taking on the Horsemen. And then at 10, so I'm trying to go around the schedule, make sure I don't miss anything. So the top, so the top bracket all plays in the morning, and then yes. the, in the afternoon is the bottom side of the bracket. Okay, that makes sense. And then uh, that'll be all being played out up until about, I believe, uh, Saturday. We'll be finishing eight man around 6 p.m. Yep, the 6 p.m. is the last game on Saturday. So we'll be right right there uh, at the loser of the 17th game. They'll play Saturday. Um, and then anybody from there will move on to Sunday. And then that'll be it for today. We got we will have roughly eleven straight hours of eight man coverage this Saturday. Big time flag football here in the DMV FFL. We are really excited, but we are also excited to take a look real quick at Sunday with the five man bracket as we pull that up. Um, taking a look at the teams here, ATA Warriors. We know about the ATA Warriors. I got a glimpse of them the first time at East Coast Nationals. I know you all saw them at uh, the Breast Cancer Awareness Tournament back in October. They uh, played over at uh, Worlds. Um, how was their performance at Worlds? I wasn't able to catch that 100% on their own. Uh, they did not do bad. Um, they ended up losing to Bex plus one in the semi. So, um can't, can't remember the score off the top of my head, but their last pool play game, they played Bex, and they lost to Bex, I think, 6-0 in that game, and then turned around and had to play them again and lost to them in the semifinals for, uh, for the uh, world championship. So, they, but, they, you know, they got a new quarterback. So, their new quarterback, um, Nick, he's young, he's mobile, you know, he's trying to learn this five-man contact game. And with a veteran like Roger, I mean, they'll, they'll teach him it. So we'll we'll see how he progresses throughout the throughout the year to see what ATA Warriors come back with. Um, I know they've added some players again. Um, so we'll we'll see uh, we'll see how they do this at this tournament on Sunday. And then from there we have Smash Mouth. I got a glimpse of them for the first time back at uh, I believe I did see them at East Coast National. If not, it was at the Breast Cancer Awareness. Nope. You, of course, saw them there as well, Ross. Yeah. Uh, a team that's always up there. In fact, they got to the semifinals of the Breast Cancer Awareness Tournament, falling to the Maryland Bullets in that one. Looking forward to seeing what they put on the field. Goon family, as mentioned, you said they're playing eights and they're playing fives. First tournament, swinging for the fences. You got to love it, man. Yeah. You got to nope. love the enthusiasm and the spirit. They're going right. all out. Like right there exactly. Out. Exactly. EA Cobras. I got a glimpse of them last year down at East Coast National. I saw them against Showtime. That was a really good competitive game. Uh, really looking forward to seeing what they have this time around. Judah, what can what cannot be said about Judah? They won the breast cancer awareness tournament back in October, beating the Bullets in the championship. So, uh, so before we wow. before we jump ahead, we got we got to uh, recognize EA Cobras. You know, they did win at uh, the UFFL Nationals in the comp division, in the B division. So they are a legit pro team now. So we're, so we're going to see what they can do uh, in the pro division. Uh, last year in the Nitro tournament, it came down to Judah versus EA Cobras in the championship at the Nitro championship, uh, Nitro uh, tournament last year. And that's, ah, man, that's that, going to be something to look out for. Yeah, the possibility of that rematch in this there, tournament. On that, on uh, the same EA, no, you know, you pick up a different EA. You're getting your tournaments crossed up again. Mm -hmm. He's been traveling so much, I he's trying to mix up teams. <laughs> um, 
Menace as well. Um, I don't know much about Menace. What do you got for them? Maryland Menace, they went down to uh, Flag Football World Tours Worlds. And from my understanding, they lost in the championship in the rec division. Um, they they've taken their lumps over the over the past couple of years, but dude, they they hang in there, and when they travel, they show out, man. So we'll we'll see how they do against some of these teams. They're so used to playing Judah, EA Cobras, ATA, Smash Mouth. You know, they play these guys all the time during league play. So it's just making them better. So we'll we'll see what they come out with this uh, tournament. Warpath. Warpath, uh, I believe this is the first time they're playing five man. Um, not not too sure, not don't have a lot of information on them. Unknown talent. I think we've seen unknown talent. Yep. Exactly. You should yeah. you should have seen them at East Coast Nationals. You should yeah. Yeah, I covered. Yeah. Breast yeah. cancer awareness. They were there. Yeah. Um they're going they're going through a transition period. Yeah. Um so yeah. so we'll see what they do. Decent it's, it's been a, a little pieces, bit tough for them. Missing a couple pieces. But other than that, they, they were doing all right. Okay. They can make, they can make some goals. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember when I saw I, I may have covered one they game. Had, uh, like the Akron, Ohio colors. Too. Okay. I know who you're talking about now. Yeah. That's what I remember yeah. about that. Um, and of course, speaking of TV, had a sort of Ohio scheme of their own. OTF, the family. We've gotten a good look at them over the last year or so. Uh, one of the better teams out there in the region. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how they are this time around um, in this five-man tournament. Uh, S Southern Maryland Venom, I'm believing, is what that stands for. Am I accurate yes. on that? Yes, it is. They, they've played a lot of non-contact. Um, so we're, we're going to see how they can adjust to contact. A bunch of younger guys, so – We'll, we'll see what they can do. I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do, albeit this is the fourth team I've known called Venom in the last two months that yeah, I came but, across. Yeah, but this one, so, I might have weird ties to the family. You might have weird ties to and family? Have, I have family. So I know. You have family in Southern now. So you think you have family on that team? Oh, I didn't say that. But it has nothing to do with the topic. Move on. <laughs> you can't say too much about <laughs> Southern Maryland because I live in Southern Maryland, man. Or in Western Maryland. <laughs> but anyways we got hornets next don't um, know any don't know anything about them i don't um, know the hornets either in this case yeah it's uh fir first time them they coming out here to play so we'll we'll see what they can do i look forward to it um i'm always curious to see what new teams come out and find man dude this is a growing game with each passing year a lot more people are starting to play the sport of five man five football and I'm really looking forward to seeing what new talent pops up in this tournament and who can make an impact very early on. Yeah. Um, Strictly Business is next. Strictly Business, if it's – I'm not sure which Strictly Business is, this is. If it's a Strictly Business that has been used to playing eight-man and they're trying five-man, not 100% sure. I have to wait until we get out there to see if it's those guys or not. Um. But if it if it is, then they were they were a solid eight man team. Um, they haven't played a lot lately, um, so we'll see if that's the team that's coming out to play uh, in five man. All right, of course, disciples. I believe that's the same disciples from the eight man tournament. Am I correct? Yep. Yes, sir. So they they've been doing five man more and more. So we'll we'll see. They're they've been taking their lumps against Judah and these other top teams. So we'll see if they uh, can make an impact in this tournament. Maryland Bullets, who uh, they've had a pretty good run themselves. They got to the final four of East Coast Nationals, losing the main event, and then lost in the Breast Cancer Awareness Championship to uh, Judah. Yep. I mean, Mar Maryland Bullets is right there, man. They they just they just haven't been able to get, o get over that hump. Um, good Good team talent out the out the yin yang but they they just haven't got over that hump and won that first championship in five man i mean the who oh, i'm i'm thinking maybe this year could be the year let, let them get over that hump and make a run for it. you know they got dion and those got dion's uh shoes and a few other got meach all those guys over there so we'll we'll see what they can do bullets always come loaded to these tournaments no matter what style they play yep 
Misfits. We're very familiar with the Misfits. We've already talked about that, though. Um, but this Misfits five-man team, we did get a look at them outside of our first game with them back last May. Um, back a while, back in December, they played a few five-man games. Um, they they looked the part. They came out fierce and intense. They bring that nine-man mentality and physicality to the game. Um but they happen to have some skilled guys who could definitely play at five man as well. And I'm really looking forward to it. I think this misfit squad might be the sleeper in this tournament. I think a lot of people don't think much of them going in, but I think misfits are about to make a run because, you know, I mean, they played good. in Jersey in another tournament as well. They definitely have the talent and potential when it comes I mean, to it, making a run in this one. It's definitely a possibility because I mean, honestly, I've seen them since last year start traveling a little bit more. Like you said, you know, they played in New Jersey what, uh, this past month at that overnight tournament. Um, yep. My understanding, they were they were uh, hanging out, hanging in there with uh, Valley Goats before they had their incident up there. Um, I know Misfits, they traveled down to Southern Maryland and played in a tournament down here. Um, so they're, they're, they're trying to get out there a little bit more. So we'll we'll see what they bring to the table when they uh, step, step in the ring with some of the top teams uh, in the five-man contact world. I can't wait to see how they do, especially going into this tournament. As we get to the final one, I'm really looking forward to their two games, but we'll get to that in a moment. And the last team we have, Flight. Anything about Flight? So Flight is out of D.C. Um, they played in one tournament that we held last year in Baltimore County. Um, newer team, very young, a uh, bunch of young guys. Um so they're they're trying to step out of their comfort zone. From my understanding, they play a lot of non-contact, co-ed, and things like that. So they're they're stepping out of their comfort zone by getting into a contact tournament. So we'll we'll see what they can bring, especially since they had some experience last year on playing against OTF uh, and a few other five-man contact teams. I can't wait to see. And let's now take a look at these matchups. Um, you know, Sunday. I can actually give you an idea of what games I'll be doing Sunday. Saturday's the one we're still trying to iron out, make sure we get it 100%. But here's what we got for Sunday. These are the games that will be on, and I'll mention which ones I'll be covering along the way. Um, we'll be starting off 115, Bullets and Strictly Business. And then you have the Family and Flight, um, Unknown Talent and the Cobras, and then Goon Family Judah. We're going live for the chance right off the gate. Judah, Goon Family, Goon Family. Here's your stage. This is your time to shine. You get the champs of the Breast Cancer Awareness Tournament right there. First game of five, man. Joey Blaze on commentary. You could not have asked for a bigger debut than what they could do this Sunday. You got to think, that changed that whole matchup now because Goon family, this is a big game now. That'll be live for them. Judah's got to come in. They got to show face. I'm looking forward to seeing how this one plays out. Yeah, it'll be interesting, especially with Goon family being a new team. So Judah doesn't have any knowledge on them. So unfortunately, when you don't have any knowledge on a team, you know, they can come out and surprise you and get a, get a head, head start on you, get a good jump on you, and then you're fighting and recover. And sometimes, it, you know, it works out to the new team's uh, favor. So we'll see if Goon family can take advantage of it and knock Judah off. We're looking forward to seeing how that goes. Um, we'll move on as well to the next field where we're going to have the second place team in the Breast Cancer Awareness Tournament. Maryland Bullets taking on the Hornets. We'll be live for that one as well. That kicks off, well, throws off, we should say in this case, at 1.45 p.m. Um, really looking forward to that one. As well as going on to that time slot, this is another really good game. The family versus Smash Mouth, that's going to be a dog fight. That's going to be a really good one. Yeah, um, I mean, it, it's going to be great. I mean, uh, Smash Mouth, as you know, they're all they're always in the t on on the top of things. Um, from my understanding, they've added some new players and all. And OTF, I mean, they're they're starting to figure this five man stuff out. You know, uh, the five man tournament that we had in Baltimore, they ended up being in the championship against Judah. Um, and then there was another there was another tournament that they went to and they ended up being the championship. So 
So they're making it to the championship. So we'll we'll see if they can uh, put something together against Smash Mouth because, you know, th those guys from Smash Mouth, they are hard-nosed. They're going to hit you, and they're going to have fun doing it. So we'll see we'll see what they bring to the table this weekend. I ain't going to lie. I'm looking at Ty Wilson's comment. I actually like the schedule. He's coming up with me a little better. He's got good ones on there. I like that. Todd, I like your choice. I like your taste. I like that a lot. He's got a point. We're going to do that. I'm going to run with that schedule. Because I thought about it after I read it. I was like, that sounds way better than what I said. We're going to go with it. E-A-U-T. That's going to be the first game we're covering. OTF Smash Mouth. Because I saw that game just now. I was like, man, I kind of want to see that one now. We got to get that one. That's a really good one. Um, Judah Misfits. They had a really good game at that Southern Maryland tournament you mentioned. We were down there as well for that. A very competitive game. I think, you know, a real opportunity to see those two go at it again. I think you, you can't miss that out. Um, and, of course, the other games going on, um, you have UT and the Disciples, as well as Goon Family, ATA Warriors. Then in the 215 game, Strictly Business and Menace. Flight versus Southern Maryland Venom. And then Cobra's Warpath. Judah Misfits, as we mentioned, will be hitting that one up. Can't miss that one. Got to have the champs. Got to have the Misfits in there. You know, it's always something when the Misfits come out and play. And when Judah comes out, you got to give them their respect. They've been around a long time. This is old guard and the what they hope to be a new guard with Misfits. And then, of course, the 245 games, Hornets and Menace. We'll hit that one up. Um, Todd said, if that's the Hornets from Philly, they are solid. You know, they're from Pennsylvania or Philly by chance? They may be. I, I haven't seen I haven't seen where they're from, but, I mean, it, it definitely could be. So, they, they definitely could be a solid team. They could uh, make some waves down here. So, they they got some good games. Um but unfortunately, though those last two games that I, me personally that I want to see is going to be the Judah Misfits and then ATA Misfits. That, I, mean, I ain't going to lie. I want to double up on. I kind of want to double up on Misfits because I I saw Misfits ATA down at that Southern Maryland tournament you mentioned. That was another right. game they played, yep. and that game had was intense to be a part of. Yeah, that was. I remember that one. I remember when they were playing, looking up. Hill. Yeah, because there was yelling and all kinds. Of yeah, stuff. I, I was. knew the miss. I was. I knew the miss was brought there, so they're gonna be yelling and stuff. But that one was. I remember doing the game and looking up there, man. Like up there, up there, yelling and everything. It added a lot to the game because you know <laughs> misfits came out. They were talking a lot of trash to ATA early on, and you know they were beating up on ATA. It was twelve nothing, and that yeah. ATA, you know, you got to give them a lot of credit. A lot of teams, when they get talked smack to about a misfits, as we've known ourselves, Ross, over the years and seen ourselves over the years, they fold under that pressure. They cave in. They give in to the smack talk and all that. The Warriors, the ATA Warriors, they Don't work with them. thrived on. Oh, yeah. And you, you, when you talk about Sheik, Frenchie, Pat, I mean, come, these guys, they're not going to back down from a, from a dog fight. These guys, especially Frenchie and Pat, they love the contacts. They're they're there for it. And Sheik, come on, Sheik is probably one of the best trash talkers in the game. So if you talk trash to Sheik, he's going to come at you with everything he got. So I mean, and he backs it up. So it so when you get into a dog fight with them, you better be prepared. A hundred percent. And I'm looking forward. That's gonna be yeah, a good I remember game. that because the Warriors came down the hill right after. I think I covered the game. My next game was Warriors. I don't remember who they played. They played somebody. But I remember talking to the Warriors the whole time. Like, yeah, I remember y'all were up there yelling. He's like, yep. <laughs> that was but you yeah. That was a cool ass tournament to go to. Man. But you remember when they were when they played a Judah up there? Um, Judah kind of quieted Misfits down. Like you didn't hear too much from uh, Misfits after Judah went up there and played them. Yeah, Judah, Judah put them to sleep. Like they came in and gave them the old fashioned treatment by the granddaddy of five man in this area. <laughs> oh, yeah, Charlie McCaffrey. Yeah, Charlie McCaffrey gave it to him. So it, it, it's one of those things when you, when you got a, a goat like Charlie th throwing for you, 
and you got Leah out there freaking catching bombs. Who else they had? They had they had Neff out there. They had Day Day, uh, Tyler Mills. I mean, <laughs> Judah's just stacked, man. And they have a, such a large pool of players to pull from. But ATA is the same way. They have a huge pool of players they can pull from. So the team that you see today may not be the same team you see tomorrow. Facts. So, so we'll so we'll see what Judah comes out with, and we'll see what uh, ATA comes out with. And after those games, uh, they'll be re everything will be seeded from one to sixteen. We will have from there the remaining playoffs, two games at a time. I think eight man will be done by that point. We're also you'll be able to come over. Once yeah, against- eight man will be eight man will be done before single elimination starts. Um. There, there is a possibility of an overlap by about a half hour if they have if the championship goes into an if game. So hopefully, we we see an outright champion and nothing will conflict with five man. But we'll we'll see how it plays out. We'll we'll make it work. That's for sure. Definitely, definitely. And as you see the bracket, you'll have the games on there three thirty to about five thirty when we have the final kickoff or throw off in this case. What a weekend it's going to be, DMV FFL Nitro. I'm really looking forward to it. You know, I, I love this. I love the sport of five-man. I'm starting to get it, you know, eight-man a little more. This flag football journey to been on roster. I can't wait for this next chapter beginning this weekend at Westminster. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely going to be worth it, man. It's uh, – I'm, I'm happy to get it back – get everybody back out there. It's been a while – you know, no, there there really hasn't been too much going on since nationals and worlds. So it, it's definitely great to get this type of turnout for a tournament. And I, I gotta say thank you to all the teams that are showing out. Um, honestly, though, you know, I don't know if you know this, Joey, but this tournament actually sold out in eight man in twelve hours. True. In twelve hours, this tournament was sold out. Egg, and this is the crazy thing. Every team was paid in full. Every team. So we were able to do the live draft, you know, a month ahead of time. So all these teams for eight man, they've had a month to prepare for their first opponent. Yeah. And so, with that month preparation, you have to wonder how much and who is going to be ready for this tournament on terms of that preparation. That's a long time to be ready. That's a lot of film you can pull up on a team. That's a lot of time you can practice. Albeit, you have to wonder how much practice does a lot of these teams have. Remember, you know, COVID kept a lot of parts closed. And for some teams, this might be their first bump since Nationals or Worlds or wherever they were in January. It's definitely a possibility, but I mean, I I don't think I've ever seen a tournament where you've had the you've had your first game your schedule a month out. You know that yeah. that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter what style you're playing to have your tournament to have your schedule a month out. That's freaking crazy, man. I mean, that, that's why I say these teams showed out. They all got registered. They were ready to go. I mean, it it's going to be a great event, man. I cannot wait. This is going to be awesome. So, Exciting. Yeah, I mean, besides this, you know, we got East Coast Nationals May 1st and 2nd. You know, we already have 140, 42, 143 teams registered across all the different divisions, man. And it's just going to grow. I mean, it really is. We're Our goal is to get 200 teams out there. That's what our goal is. Um, hopefully we hit it without without any problems. But there's still time. Get registered. That way you can get your seed locked in because we're going to do a live draft for each division, just like we just did for the five man uh, about a week ago. Or, yeah, about a week ago, we did the five man live draft. So we're going to do the same thing for every division for East Coast Nationals. And we cannot wait for that event. Coverage of East Coast Nationals on our end. Begins right in late April on that final week. Showtime to be determined, but we will be live May 1st and 2nd for FFWCT 
East Coast Nationals from Richmond, Virginia. But before we go to Nationals, we got DMV FFL Nitro this Saturday and Sunday. Can't wait. Any other thoughts tonight, uh, Mark? Uh, nah, man, I'm I'm excited to be out there. I'm excited for for this event. Um, cash prize for for both eight man and five man. Uh, first place for eight man gets I believe twelve hundred. First place for five for five man gets a thousand. Uh, second place in each division get gets a half bid to East Coast Nationals. Um, I, I'm just excited to get back to football, man. It, it it's been too long, so so we're we're gonna see how it goes, but. The, the one thing I do want to say is for any team that is looking for the competition, you know, you got all these teams talking about they're looking for this. They want the smoke. They want that competition. But, hey, if you haven't signed up for East Coast Nationals, you can't say anything to me. You duck in that wreck because we are going to have the best of the best at East Coast Nationals. So if you if you think you are top a top team, you need to get signed up and get there. And I cannot wait to see who steps up to the plate this upcoming May for East Coast Nationals. You know, we may be a while away from Worlds down in Florida, but let's be sure that the season has begun and the road to there begins this weekend with DMV FFL Nitro. Yo, look, you'll be live. Hey, people are more than welcome to come to the park. There is no restrictions. Uh, as far as spectators and all, you have to wear your mask. But hey, you get out the house, you get to see some great football. What what better way to spend your weekend? I can't think of a better way to spend it than this weekend in Carroll County. Can't wait. Yep, that's it for me, man. Um, thanks for having us on. Uh, great, great to, to talk to you. Great to see that you're going to be there this weekend, man. It's going to be a great event. I look forward to it. DMV FFL Nitro this weekend kicking off Saturday, 8 a.m. here on Facebook. Joey Blaze, T Blunt Talk for Mark Williams and Ross Collins. I'm Joey Blaze saying good night and we'll see you this Saturday. Peace.